self-actualization essentially originally described, and that was before humanistic psychology, uh, has been defined as this kind of drive for autonomy, separation from the environment, development and growth. So kind of becoming the, ver the best version of ourselves in a way, or the best version we could be not by standards of other people, not by standards of like psychology books or science, whatever you might uh, want to call it, but based on our own, own capabilities and skills. So um, it was, if you want to research it more, it was a German or Austrian, I think it was German psychiatrist called um, Kurt Goldstein, uh, who first developed the stem of self-actualization. And he described actually self-actualization as not just limited to people, but actually every single organism on the earth, uh, maybe outside of earth as well, who knows, uh, having this drive to kind of become the best version of themselves and utilize your all possible skills and capabilities in life. So in in from this perspective, it's like, People are actualizing themselves, plants are actualizing themselves, animals actualizing themselves. So basically they, the, the whole goal of this, this process is to live life to the best of our ability. Now with the development of humanistic psychology, so Abraham Maslow, then Carl Rogers, self-actualization became more like motivation. So it's not like we are, we might be having this idea that self-actualization leads us to a specific goal or leads us to a specific state of mind or state of being, but essentially Maslow, Abraham Maslow, saw self-actualization as, um, as a motivation for growth. So basically it's a never ending process. And he first, he first started describing self-actualization as, as an end goal of human development. So he, he noticed that certain people are already kind of self-actualized as they display the certain characteristics like creativity, being able to, you know, uh, be grateful for simple things in life and um, having these peak experiences and flow in life in, in general and being way more open to different ideas and possibilities than so-called average people. And also what he, not, what he noted at that time was that this so-called self-actualized self people uh, were having kind of more accurate perception on themselves and the reality and other people as well. But that was in the beginning. And then as he was further developing his theory of human needs and how we are meeting our needs, how we are uh, motivated to, to, to meet them in the first place, that's where I think he started noticing that the self-actualization is actually a kind of never-ending process. And he also added, as eventually he added a further stage on this hierarchy of needs. Uh, I hope you are familiar with this kind of famous pyramid of, of a different kind of needs that, that humans have. So eventually he added this extra stage beyond self-actualization called self-transcendence. So as we can see here that self-actualization is actually a, a, a kind of process, a tendency. And that's what Carl Rogers uh, later on noticed as well. He, he, he observed in people this kind of drive or tendency to be healthy, to develop, to live the best life, to find purpose, to find meaning, uh, right? But what is... We, we could kind of call this tendency a motivation as well. So it's not like uh, self-actualization is some, some, to, some sort of state we have to strive, but rather it's this tendency or, or motivation. And it's an unconscious one as well. It's an automatic one that we are all having within us. So in, in a way from, from this psychological perspective, as, as psychology developed over years, um, we can see here that self-actualization is actually something like a meta-motivation. So it's an all-embracing motivation of, of everything. So for example, if you're motivated to get some food, if you're motivated to uh, get a new career, if you're motivated to uh, plant 
a, a flower in your car- garden. That could be could be an expression of self actualization. I'm saying could be because it could be an ex- expression of something else as well. But from from this perspective, self actualization could be seen as this meta motivation that drives our action, pushes us forward. So it's like it is this driving tendency to individuate ourselves to become who we are who we truly are in a, in a way as we are actualizing ourselves um we become more individuated so for example if you are familiar with the theory of carl jung we know the process of individuation is this um is this process of kind of becoming whole and learning more about ourselves as we're going our own so where we kind of create a separation from the environment but at the same time we are not completely abandoning the environment so it's more like a, in a way a process of interdependence so we interact with the environment we know that we need environment for for many things and the environment probably needs us as well um but in this process of individuation which is is essentially in a way process of self actualization as well we develop this autonomy and we learn about clearly defined boundaries between ourselves and the world or lack of them uh, depending on which level of the psyche you want you, you want to look at um but essentially in this process of individuation we become more independent more more autonomous we have more choice in life we choose things and values for ourselves and as we separate ourselves as we become this distinct from the environment and we learn more about ourselves different drives we withdraw all these expectations or projections and we can see other people more clearly so that's that's from this more perspective of individuation but of 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 course there are many different uh, many overlaps between these two theories because as a result of of this process of self actualization you also become more distinct more autonomous you make choices for yourself in terms of your own values in terms of your own you know wishes desires but most importantly the core of this of this drive is the fact that self actualization as seen by originally by by maslow or kurt goldstein is is a need it's this need for growth essentially so when we when we are motivated to grow we are motivated to actualize ourselves right and at the same time we are motivated to meet this need to become more to become more but at the same time true to ourselves so it's not like we we want to change ourselves in the process although sometimes that might be a byproduct of of uh, of actualizing ourselves in a way but it's more about making these choices and that are based on on who we are who we truly are i would imagine that there could be some misinterpretation or misunderstanding of the self-actualization process uh, where maybe some of us could be thinking that self-actualization process is about becoming very self-centered narcissistic egotistic egotistic where we only focus on ourselves uh, but as I was saying before, actually, as a result of this process, you become more environment oriented, more conscious of yourself and the environment and other people. I would say that maybe for some people, there might be a stage on, on their path, on their growth, where they need to be a little bit more narcissistic than usual or more self-centered than usual. And it's part of their learning. Maybe that's what they need to do in order to disentangle themselves for example from the super ego from from all this pressure to conform to the society but as we are growing it shouldn't be i don't think it should be like a permanent stage ideally because if if you do become completely self-centered narcissistic that's not self-actualization because self-actualization is about expansion you can't expand when you are focused only on yourself. 